Hey, what's going on everyone? So it's been about six months since NVIDIA's Ampere launch and the GPU availability hasn't gone any better since then. And I think everyone was so excited for there to be new GPUs only for the availability to be such a letdown. And the price as well, the price has been really high and people were hoping for the price to eventually come down only for the price to keep uh, increasing. So I think it's probably time for people to start thinking about other options available to them. One of those options might be to get a laptop Laptop instead of a desktop and that's what we're going to talk about today we're going to talk about this new Geekbench Resolve for the Intel 8 core Tiger Lake H processor and so uh, if you can't get a desktop maybe perhaps consider a laptop so we're also going to talk about the Nvidia RTX GeForce 30 series cards on laptops and what the performance of that is and also if you just want to get the Tiger Lake H processor without the GPU, if you just want to rely on the integrated graphics, what the performance of those integrated graphics might be. So Tom's Hardware reported on the Geekbench result for the 8-core Tiger Lake H processor. So let's take a look at the benchmark result. And as you can see, they did three tests here. So uh, obviously to make sure there were no errors involved, uh, they did it three times. So the single core score was 1400 and the multi core score was 7727 on the first test. The second test was 1485 for the single core score and 8228 for the multi core score. The third test was the same as the second test. So it looks like that the second and third test may be more accurate than the first one. So uh, but this is the Geekbench browser where you can compare it against the other processors that are out there. And as you can see, for 1400 for the single core score, it's pretty much in line with the existing Tiger Lake CPUs that are out there. Of course, those are the four core models and this one is the eight core model. And if you want to compare it to the AMD Ryzen laptop CPUs, well, it's pretty much uh, the same as the AMD Ryzen 7 in terms of single core. I would say the Intel obviously uh, is a little bit uh, better or a little bit higher uh, so that was uh, 1400 whereas the Ryzen 7 5800H was 1364. In terms of the multi-core score well uh, it's a long way back because obviously it can't compete with the desktop multi-core CPUs that are available on desktop but uh, 8000 would probably put you in around about uh, the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X or uh, something like an Intel Core i7-10700F. So I think that's pretty impressive that it can reach those similar heights to a desktop. Obviously it can't do that for sustained periods given that it's just a 45 watt model versus those desktop CPUs that are like 250 watts. Uh, but with the laptop CPU, I think uh, if you needed to get some extra performance at a pinch, uh, you should be able to get that with these laptop CPUs. And I think in terms of gaming, uh, I think that suits gaming just fine because most of the time you're going to be GPU bound rather than CPU bound. So I think uh, these laptop CPUs will do just fine in gaming. So I wanted to just touch on the model numbers for the old Tiger Lake models versus the new Tiger Lake models so that you know what to look for when you uh, think about getting a Tiger Lake laptop. So the previous model numbers were uh, for the i7, it was 11375H and 11370H and the core i5 model was 11300H. So all of these were 113 something. Now, if you look at the rumored Tiger Lake H series, uh, you've got the 11980HK, 11900H, 11800H, 11400H, 11260H. So these are all the new models that are coming out and they're all gonna be six core 12 threads or six core six thread in this case. Uh, and then also there are going to be eight core 16 thread variants. Now in the intro, I talked about the performance of the RTX 30 series cards on laptops. Now, if you're not familiar, Nvidia actually have a mobile version, which are basically for the laptops and then a desktop version as well. And even though they use the same naming scheme, so they'll use RTX 3070 on the laptops and then they'll use an RTX 3070 on a desktop, the performance of those two models are, are very different. So this is something to be aware about because if you look at the NVIDIA 
RTX 3070, there's a Max-Q model and also a non-Max-Q model as well that they sell. And sometimes they don't even specify whether it's Max-Q or not uh, because these laptops are made by other uh, third-party brands like Acer and Asus. And so uh, sometimes they don't list the fact that it's a Max-Q model. Now, uh, the Max-Q model is not the same as the uh, RTX 3070 laptop model. The regular RTX 3070 is like a 130 watt, 5 watt model. And then this Max-Q model is just 80 watts. And then again, of course, on desktop, the RTX 3070, I believe is about 220 watts. Uh, and I probably need to check that. But as you can see here, even here between the RTX 3070 Max-Q models, there's an 80 watts, an 85 watt, and a 90 watt model. And so what does this all mean? Well. This uh, RTX 3070 Max-Q at 80 watts performs about the same performance as the desktop RTX 3060 model. So let's take this a little further and there's a comparison between the different models with different TGPs, the total graphics power on these GPUs. And so if you look at this article from laptopmedia.com, they did a comparison between the different 3070s at 85 watts, at 95 watts, and 130 watts. And uh, let's just jump straight to the results. And on 3D Mark Firestrike, the 130 watt model got 23% better score than the 85 watt model. And as you can see there, they have an Asus TUF Gaming Dash F15 and then the ASUS ROG Strix G17 uh, is the 130 watt model. So when you go and buy a laptop, make sure to go and check out what the uh, power draw is for these GPUs. Usually it will have it listed there in the specs and uh, it's a little bit dodgy if they don't do that because that's going to determine what the performance of that 3070 is going to be. Now finally, I just want to touch on the integrated graphics of these Tiger Lake CPUs. I know a lot of people just want to get the uh, GeForce RTX 30 series cars inside the laptop, but there is a case to be made for good integrated graphics that don't suck up a lot of power. So I think uh, we're kind of getting to the stage where we're almost getting 1080p level graphics and uh, maybe it's not this generation with these Intel Iris Xe graphics, but I think we're at a stage where maybe in the next couple of generations, we're going to get 1080p across the board for everything. And now, as you can see in this chart, this is from Intel, so this is a first party chart. Um, and I tried to get other charts, but I just ran out of time. And so just bear in mind that these first party charts are gonna show the games looking as good as possible or the performance as good as possible. But as you can see there, Rocket League, Dota 2, CSGO, Valorant, League of Legends, all above 100 FPS. So if you want to play those games, uh, the integrated graphics on board this is uh, pretty good. But if you want to play newer games or more open world games, well, you can see the other results. And bear in mind that it says here 1080p, but it doesn't say what settings. So I'm assuming that these are going to be low settings because uh, from my experience in terms of integrated graphics, uh, you're not really getting ultra graphics out of them. And I think uh, they probably want to keep these charts in terms of frame rates as high as possible. So I'm guessing these are probably low settings. Uh, but as you can see, GTA 5, Grid, Overwatch, about 60 FPS. But as you get down to like Battlefield 5, Doom Eternal, Borderlands 3 at the other end of the chart, it's closer to 30 FPS. Now, if you want to compare with the NVIDIA MX350, which is a uh, laptop GPU, well, they're the performance results here. And I'll just leave these on the screen for a second so you can have a look at them. But it seems like it's very comparable performance to an MX350. So if you've seen that uh, previously before, uh, well, this is going to be very similar. And finally, this is a chart where it compares the Intel Iris Xe graphics to the AMD Ryzen 7 4800U graphics. And as you can see there, uh, the Intel generally beats it across the board pretty comfortably, I would say, by at least 20%, if not more. And I think previously there was a case to be made for getting a Ryzen 7 uh, G CPU laptop, uh, laptop CPU. But uh, now that Intel also has 8-core 16 threads on their high-end model, well, perhaps uh, 
it's kind of negated that advantage from AMD. And if you're going for integrated graphics, perhaps the Intel CPU might be the one to get. Okay, that's gonna do it for this one. If you like this video, make sure to click the like button, also to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.